Hello and good morning, Amber Marie here. All right, so it is 6.24 a.m. I'm in Sacramento, California, United States. Um, and this is typically the time I set aside for testimony, blogging, um, and writing. Uh, but the Lord has called in my heart to verbally share my previous blogs and then to keep it up from here on out. Um, in full transparency, reading is not a strong point for me. I can write all day long. I can storytell. Um, but when you give me a text, man, I don't know if it's dyslexia or what, but it's very difficult for me. And it's also very difficult for me to follow along. So I just pray that this blesses somebody else who maybe struggles to, uh, you know, read, follow along with the fine print. So I'm in my robe. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to try and get caught up as much as possible today so that I can post these. Um, even now, going into the U version and hitting play and hearing someone read it to me, um, I get a lot more out of it. I get a lot more seeds. So uh, this is one of my first blogs. It's from November 3rd, 2022. And this is a flip on focus. I had a dream about Lee. And that dream ended up being for me. A little backstory, lest I forget. Last Sunday, I sang with the worship team. I was weak then and used my rod to exhibit an unsteady gait. Yet I went and afterwards I sat in the front row to wait for what the spirit had for me. About 30 minutes into the sermon, a missionary visitor was speaking. I heard a commotion in the back of the church. I looked and I saw a homeless man, oblivious to his surroundings, babbling loudly. One of our congregation members had confronted him, telling him to sit and be quiet or he may be cast out from the church. You will have to leave. Lee was out of his mind and in good company. I had never seen him before, but my heart wanted to meet him over and over again. Slowly, I made my way back to him. I had nothing to offer but the peace of the spirit that had showered over me and that in which the Lord had gifted in perfect time. So I went. As I approached, his eyes met mine. I smiled and asked him how he was. We exchanged names and he rambled, but he saw me and I saw him. When he knew I had saw him, his spirit settled into unexplainable peace, matching that in which I had brought. Next, I gently encouraged him to listen for the spirit in the church. I turned around and listened to the message, <clears throat> occasionally glancing back to keep him focused ahead and not around him. Lee's demons, they were close, but not victorious. Then came time for me to sing a special. I left from him and went back to the stage. I had previously chosen the song Rattle. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's very allergy season here. I had previously chosen the song Rattle by Elevation Worship. This song is packed with power and prophecy. It also elaborates on Ezekiel 37, and I love it. One of the verses lyrics state, Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power, it runs in our veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. During this portion of music, I focused my eyes on Lee. He had his hands raised with the biggest smiles and his eyes were closed. The God of all gods, my God, had reached into the darkness and called him out. I had hoped to touch bases with him after church before he went on about his journeys, but I missed him. But that night I had a dream. Lee was there and so was the Holy Spirit. After leaving the platform in my dream, I went to Lee. I stood before him and I boldly asked, Lee, do you know that the Lord wants you? There was an urgency in my voice and urgency in my posture. Lee stood, hands slightly extended to his sides and he looked down upon himself. He was filthy, <laughs> crazed, and he understood he brought nothing to the table, nothing to Christ, nothing. Lee! I said again with urgency and to regain his attention, not your body, Lee. Jesus wants this. I motioned with both my fingers to my eyes. I was referring to the soul, the substance of who he is. 
I turned my fingers to match his eyes. In that moment, I could see life and vibrance flood into his eyes and I knew he had heard from spirit. The dream ended. Now, why is this significant? I was preaching to the choir. That's why. I've been struggling physically. I've been made weak and wasting away from a virus the last two years. It's something the doctors cannot explain. I knew this message was not merely intended for Lee. In addition, I recently adopted a puppy who has effortlessly trained to help me with my stability. I trained him to focus. Focus, I would tell my pup as I motioned with both fingers to my eyes. My hand signaled to him to train him in obedience. When I give this command, he sits up straight and looks to me, waiting for direction. He gives me his undivided attention. This simple hand signal was the same signal God was using to woo me deeper into an understanding of what he needs from me. Focus, Amber. Focus and wait for directions on how to proceed. I've walked in the valley with the shadows of death. I've watched them as they've danced around the fire, feasting and scavenging for more. I feared evil and I feared death. I could find no comfort in that place at the time, no staff, no rod, no green pastures, just death and evil that rallied around it. 30 years later, I've arrived in the green pastures to lay, to heal, to rest. This resting seemingly by force to recover and refocus is a gift I never knew I needed. The Lord has shown me his rod for guidance, correction, and stability. His rod, and now mine, showing me a new path and a new directive. But what, O oh Lord? What shall I say and where shall I go? I fear no one but the works of your hand alone, O oh Lord. As I rest, I revel in what has come to pass. From death I observed and lived, to the river's edge, bustling with wildlife, water, and promise. From the desert wastelands to the lush green vineyards lining the hillsides. Enough sustenance and life. For the rest of mine. Why am I still not satisfied, O oh Lord? Why have I come here, continuing to lament and seek more? When is more enough? Lord, you have healed the deepest parts of who I am. You alone have held my hands in yours and hidden my spirit in you. You have delivered me and allowed me to see and hear the truth. You, Lord, you alone, Almighty oh God, have been the one who sought and found my heart. Lord, you alone demolished the walls I had built, brimming with mistrust, resentments, and brokenness. You owe Jesus, and it's you alone that I seek today. From the day I was born, I was created to love. I've loved hard and I've served hard, O oh Lord. When I lost my first love, after life's vulnerable and rocky start, the deterioration of flesh began. Both trauma and grief beginning to unravel all the perfection you had created in me, your image. Little by little, year after year, the trauma toll on my mind was great, but I learned there's nothing greater than you. In due time, I would seek you and you would answer immediately. You had been in pursuit of me. When I merely exhaled a breath with a heart intent, you were effervescently present. As I opened my heart's door to your spirit and began to trust that you could make me new, you did not fail. From this moment, I was made alive, like dry bones retching from the desert floor, shaken, awakened, groaning from the memories past with the promise of a bright future. As the muscle, tendons, nerve connection, brain matter were rewired and reformed, Lord, you were there. You were there then and you always have been. You knew. Although damage was done, the fight was already won. You alone, O oh God, reverse damage. Thank you for fulfilling your promises that you did and you still do. Just after I took my first breath with you, it began. My eyes brightened as though a veil had been pulled back from my eyes. These new eyes seeking only your face. Spiritual warfare finally put to rest with one embrace. My ears can now hear many things, but your voice is all I sought. Time after time, I would continue to take my first breath over and over. I've repeatedly become distracted, Lord, and you alone draw close to me back to your side, lovingly, gently, and boldly reminding me who I am and whose I am. Lord, my body has grown frail and weak. 
Help me to trust in you, O Lord. Help me to remember the valley has fallen away and the time to raise up from the pastures is not now, Lord. Help me to focus on who you are, dear God, and wait for directive from you. I am willing, Lord. I love you, O Lord, my God. I will sing your praise alone until my last breath, period.